like we have another afternoon of heavy traffic volume downtown on I-10. Vehicles are moving slowly and drivers are advised to please proceed with caution. Let me tell you, I never thought I'd be happy to get back on Airline Highway and now all of a sudden, I'm given the alternative of I-10 at 5.30 in the afternoon in Airline Highway, sometimes you choose Airline Highway, but I can tell you, neither one of them are good choices. Well, we have three central warehouses. And we travel every interstate highway in uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and East Texas. That's Interstate 10, 12, 49, going north, I-20 across the top of the state, plus all of them in Mississippi and East Texas. In all of that area, the most congested interstate is Interstate 10 coming in and going out of Baton Rouge. It's astonishing to me that between this exit here on I-10 and, and the I-10, I-12 split that you, you, you have just spontaneous delays and there's no accidents. Anybody that's driven on this interstate on a afternoon, God forbid you get on the interstate on a Friday afternoon, um, knows that you can't get anywhere around Baton Rouge during commute time. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just frustrating. Interstate 10 is one of the longest roadways in America and one of the main arteries running through the great city of Baton Rouge. As we look back at the history of this expansive interstate, we also look forward to the future with a feasibility study to determine whether continued improvement is needed. The voice of this project will come from all of us, the people of Baton Rouge, as we explore the possibilities for I-10. In 1954, it was the year Marilyn Monroe tied the knot with Jolton Joe DiMaggio. Bill Haley and the Comets first taught the world to rock around the clock, and over 4.8 million vehicles rolled off their production lines and onto the roadways of America. The age of the automobile was upon us, and like most of the country, Baton Rouge was changing. On May 12th, at a formal, groundbreaking ceremony east of Memorial Stadium, the Baton Rouge Expressway was born. Two years later, Congress passed the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, and the Dwight D. Eisenhower Interstate Highway System would soon begin to spread through every state in the nation. In Louisiana, what began as the Baton Rouge Expressway was destined to become part of the 2,460 miles of cross-continental roadway known as I-10. The interstate system in our country was developed to move goods and services from state to state for economic development, for the viability of our country, and also for our defense. In the early 1950s, walking was the primary mode of transportation in downtown Baton Rouge. The city was a grid of two-lane streets aided by two major thoroughfares, Airline Highway and Florida Boulevard. The population of Baton Rouge had boomed after World War II, reaching 150,000 by 1959, nearly tripling its pre-war number of 35,000. In the age of the automobile, more people meant more cars. The downtown streets designed for lighter transportation were quickly becoming congested with shiny new Fords, Chevrolets, DeSotos, and Studebakers. As the decade drew to a close, those growing numbers of people were steering their cars toward the suburbs. Downtown businesses felt an increasing need to bring people back into the city. I-10 was their answer. The interstate route here and in many other places is designed to get the mostest there, the fastest and the safest. And since most of the traffic wants to get to downtown Baton Rouge, all qualified experts feel the interstate freeway route should open into the downtown business area. Effie Shepard, The State Times, 1959. I-10 was laid out such that it provided a means of getting travelers into the city of Baton Rouge. By 1960, nearly 80 million passenger vehicles were cruising the roadways of America. And the debate over routing I-10 through Baton Rouge had been hotly contested for over a year. 
Finally, in 1963, construction began on I-10 at Washington Street. It would be 16 years later, in 1979, when the project was officially completed. There are some in the city who say the interstate system will make this town a major city, assuring it of a rosy future. But others, tired of crawling in peak hour traffic, contend the most important aspect of the space age road and street system is that the interstate project will give Baton Rouge the solution to the city's traffic problems for at least a few years. Effie Shepard, The State Times, 1959. Today, more than 30 years after the completion of I-10, and over 50 years since its original design was imagined, Baton Rouge is a dramatically different place. You know, I think Baton Rouge, uh, the growth in the population of Baton Rouge is, is uh, poised to just expand and explode. I think that after Katrina, we saw such a huge influx of new individuals in Baton Rouge. It sort of took us a moment to brace ourselves and get ready for um, the expansion. Um, and I just believe that as Baton Rouge is growing more and more, we'll see more of that, uh, that growth, that development in both population. I think that we have a unique opportunity to get um, very new businesses here, new industry here. So I think Baton Rouge is just poised for, for greatness. The 1960 population of 150,000 has ballooned to over 800,000 in the greater Baton Rouge area alone. Local commerce has largely been replaced with interstate distribution. And the dream of I-10 travel has largely remained a reality through continued improvements. The state of Louisiana has invested over $315 million over the past several years, improving I-10 and I-12. But the four and a half miles of interstate that pass through downtown were designed in 1960 for a United States with 80 million cars on the road. Today, that number has more than tripled, with over 250 million passenger vehicles touring America's roadways, not including the millions of transfer trucks, which now account for 60% of all U.S. freight shipping. One of the most important things for us is for us to be able to tell the customer that if we have everything they need and when we can deliver it to them. And it's, it's almost impossible to predict when we could make a delivery from Baton Rouge over to the, the west side. It's the same thing is true when we're going to the south, down in the uh, Gonzales, in that area. Four o'clock in the afternoon, if they needed a late delivery going to Gonzales on Interstate 10, you could forget it. There's just so much traffic going through that artery, uh, particularly on holidays and special events because people are going backwards and forwards. Not to mention the amount of commerce that travels through that artery with 18 wheelers. You know, it's, I mean, that's the southern region of the U.S. That's the primary um, you know, trade artery uh, going from Los Angeles all the way over to, uh, to Florida and all points in between. Traffic is so bad on the interstate, this part of town. Um, our business in Port Allen, you've got people that, that won't deliver anymore um, because they said, just, especially like on a Friday, they won't even attempt to come across the bridge because if you don't get across the bridge and back before 3.30, you're stuck. Today, the vast majority of commuters in Baton Rouge get to work in their cars. And since the bulk of the populace now lives outside the downtown area, I-10 has become one of the main arteries moving hundreds of thousands of people through the city on a daily basis. I live in the great hamlet of Plaquemine, Louisiana, and so I'm, I'm on I-10 every day. Um, and it's just, it's just congested all the time. Um, but there's always a delay. On a bad day, it's, it's atrocious. You know, the population's just exploded, and that's all a good thing. The problem is that the interstate system is essentially the same it was when it was originally built. The I-10, I-12 split is, is better than it was, and 
Right now there's a lot of construction going on between the split and down to Highland Road and, and while that's going to help and that's going to be a real plus, that's just not nearly enough. Well, we've had more and more growth. In fact, there's over 119,000 vehicles that travel I-10 daily. 118,000 vehicles travel I-12 daily. That's 237,000 vehicles a day that travel the I-10, I-12 corridor. So with this growth, we have much more delays in traffic, uh, congestion. Of course, we are always concerned about safety due to the growth of Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas. In addition to the hundreds of thousands of commuters who travel I-10 each day, the interstate is also an important main artery for goods being shipped across the country. Los Angeles, Phoenix, Tucson, San Antonio, Houston, New Orleans, Mobile, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville are all major cities along its route. It'd be impossible to have a great big distribution center right along Interstate 10 in Baton Rouge, it would just be out of the question. If you have traffic congestion, you know, an interstate that's really not conducive to making sure that commerce continues to move, then, then you're stuck in the water. And so I think that being able to make sure that you focus on matching the infrastructure needs with the economic development desires and wishes of your community is critical. It has to be a perfect match in order for that thing to move like a well-oiled machine. Otherwise, if commerce can't get to the customers and customers can't get to commerce and it's an easy process, then um, economically a community is going to suffer. When the Baton Rouge stretch of I-10 was designed, it was created to help usher in a new era of American travel. For a city of 150,000 people, and a nation of only 80 million automobiles, Baton Rouge's section of I-10 was adequate. Locals saw this as a solution that would last a few years. Today, decades later, this same stretch of interstate built for a city of 150,000 now supports a local population of over 800,000. Improvements have been made in the past and now we are conducting a feasibility study to determine if new improvements are needed to help our roadways keep up with the successful growth of Baton Rouge. I'm, I'm a big supporter. Let's do something to make it easier in Baton Rouge. I don't know if that's a loop. I don't know if that's another bridge. I don't know if that's more lanes. I know there are people who are smarter than me that can figure that out, but I'm all for let's, let's move forward. So it's important for us now to look at ways to facilitate traffic improvement through this corridor. And we have been doing that. In fact, approximately $315 million has been invested in the I-10, I-12 corridor. So now it's time for us to look at the section between the Mississippi River Bridge on I-10 to the I-10, I-12 split because we need to look at this and expand this corridor as well in order to complement the $315 million investment that we are currently making. Right now we're in the feasibility stage and that means exactly what it sounds like, that we're actually analyzing the feasibility to do a project. So we're trying to gather um, ideas and suggestions for improvement as we study this whole corridor and obviously the community is vital to that. So we want lots of feedback from them on how um, it, it can affect them and their, get their involvement in the process. You know, I think improvements to the interstate I-10 is just significant in that as Baton Rouge and our city and our parish grows and develops, um, we have to be able to have the necessary infrastructure in place to accommodate that growth and development. And so because of the fact that I-10 is the major thoroughfare where everyone utilizes it, both local people as well as visitors, it's critical that the expansion is um, carefully thought out, is very methodical, but it's strategic and it incorporates the natural growth of where we're going as a city. These projects affect all of us, our daily lives, where we live, where we travel, and it's important for us all to come together and look at this and try to come up with solutions to be able to facilitate the traffic movement. And as a community, I feel 
that we can come up with innovative ideas that not only facilitate traffic movement, but also create the type of community that we want that surrounds the interstate improvement project. Along with our city's commuters, local business, tourism, and trade may all benefit from continued improvements to I-10. Now is the time to see what is possible. If a solution is to be found, it will come from all of us to try and continue to make Baton Rouge a better home for I-10.